What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? As my compadre would say over there on the neutral zone, wild on twos. Yo quiero Taco Bell. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Orale. Orale. Vato. Give me a burrito, supreme. Que pasó, cabrón? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? We got Bedlam Gray Star Danny in here. J-Man and I believe Dark Soul. They're up to something right now. So we're just going to have a kick-ass conversation between all of us right here. Uh, the topic of the first segment is going to be Harley Davidson and why it's associated with freedom. Bedlam, what do you got, man, on that subject? Uh, associated with, well, 1903, they were fucking established in America. It's an American-based fucking company. It was. <laughs> Fast tense. Because now all your fucking parts are from other countries. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's that fucking eagle and bar and shield, man. That just lights everybody's uh, fantasies up, don't it, Danny? Getting on that yeah. Harley. It does, man. I mean, Harley's always been... You know, despite what anybody wants to say, whether they like the Harley game or not, Harley's always been, I mean, I, I can only tell from my past experience, like when I was when I was younger, I did the crotch rocket scene. And then I did, you know, I, I had a, a Yamaha or no, I had a Kawasaki Vulcan for a little while. And that was like the closest thing to a Harley I had, but it wasn't a Harley. Once I got a Harley. It just makes you feel like a man, man. It's like you 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 got the best of the best. You know what I mean? I'm not saying Harley's the best bike out there. Don't get me wrong, but but it's always just had that image, man. That biker image. It's always had that freedom image. It's just always been the the mecca image of of the motorcycle world, you know? Right. And we gotta congratulate Danny, man. He hit a thousand subs. A thousand. Yes, sir. Subs. If thank you, you know, thank you. If you ain't over on Danny's channel, man, you're missing out, man. He's uh, you know, old school shy town. Uh, you know, gives it as it is. He's For got sure. a little writer block right now, so we got to get him moving on that. <laughs> he I'm mentioned, on it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> he mentioned uh, Gray Star coming out of the sports bike scene, and that's something I find all the time. As people get older, they get out of the sports bike. It's either for, uh, you know, your back's freaking killing you on the damn thing, or they want that type of image. Yeah. Think, Grace, there. Uh, man, you you want to jump on a Harley and just cruise and go long distances? You can't do that shit on the sports bike. Not at our age. <laughs> no. I did it when I was younger. I rode from Chicago to Daytona on a GSXR 1000. The key word there was there, but... younger. Well, yeah, way younger. Yeah, <laughs> we bunch of old people up here, man. Is yeah, these young... bro. Uh, what do you think? Getting back you... to the Harley Freedom thing, man. I think a lot of that has to do with that movie Easy Riders. You think it was a marketing yeah. ploy? I do. I really do. And it worked. Look at it. Right. What do you think, Bedlam? You think Harley lived off the old outlaw biker uh, image and just used that for their gain? And until oh, hell yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. then when they didn't need us, they threw us out. <clears throat> that's yeah. how I was yeah. going to say that's that. A, yeah, that's what they're doing now. So, I mean, they're going, they're gearing towards a younger generation. They don't need the older generation no more because we've already, they've already profited off of us. Period. So. Yeah, I mean, let's let's be honest. <laughs> really, Harley didn't make a play on anybody. The motorcycle club scene and the old bikers are what made Harley. If it wasn't for them, you know, the real fucking bikers of the world, if it wasn't for them, Harley would have never made it. We, you got to remember something. We bailed them assholes out what twice, I believe. Yeah, I mean, time. like the real biker shit, like MC guys and you know the old school guys. You know, they were going under, man, and, and we bowed them out by buying bikes and keeping that scene alive. So, yeah, they played off the scene later on, but we made them, you know what I mean? And now, of course, like you just said, Hollywood, they forgot us because now when guys like us walk into a Harley dealer, you know, we ain't got flip-flops on and a fucking button-up shirt. You know, now we're looked at like, oh, you know, we got this some guy. 
man. It's like we got a disease like AIDS or something, man. They don't yeah. want to come. You Dude, know, I walked, I walked into, I won't, you know what? I will say to dealer because fuck them. I walked, <laughs> I walked <laughs> into Woodstock Harley and I had about $28,000 cash in my pocket. I was there to buy a Harley. Okay. I, I buy and sell Harleys. I was going to buy one for myself. And this was many years ago, but I walked in there and I'm walking around looking at bikes. And I mean, yeah, you know, people would walk up, you know, certain salesmen, those I won't mention, but, you know, I know them. They'd walk up. Hey, what's up, Danny? What's going on? You know, hey, what's up? You know, and I'm looking at bikes and I mean, it was like whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm watching guys walk in there, you know, you know, with their flip flops on, like literally, you know what I'm saying? And, and they're like all running to that guy. And it's like, yo, dude. This guy's working off of a fucking Visa card or credit. I got straight real cash in my pocket, you know, mm. and you're not even giving me one one minute of your time to, like, talk to me. You know what I mean? Like, it was crazy, man. I mean, I ain't trying to diss Woodstock, but that's just one of my many experiences there. I would because they're like a Disneyland, man. You know, they're all hyped up for the, uh, you know, Harley this, Harley that for the rubs and stuff. And it's like... Uh -huh. I'm going to hit you on Woodstock. I really haven't been in a good one that ain't Disneyland to me. Uh, my nah. first experience was uh, over on North Avenue in Elmhurst, right over there. Uh, what is it? Wildfire. Okay. When, they yeah, used wildfire. To, when they used to be the little one across the street, it was just like an old independent dealer. And then they went crazy, man. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think, Bedlam, about this Disney World experience? Fuck ringing that bell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I bought my bike, I told him, I said, you ring that bell, I'll fucking throw the paperwork right back in your face. <laughs> That's the same thing when I went and got my Dyna, you know, that you want to ring the bell. I was like, what the hell I want to ring that stupid thing for, man? That's exactly what I fucking told him. I right. ring the fucking bell. <laughs> And then uh, I got pissed off and I said, uh, you know what? I just, you know, dropped $16,000 on you and you give me two fucking t-shirts. What the hell is this, man? Yeah, and they yeah, let you ring dude. a bell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you got t-shirts. Well, yeah, true enough. Uh, what was your disappointment? That's what happens when you buy a victory. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't well, buy that. what I was just going to say. <laughs> what was your disappointment, Dana. dog? Gray star with when uh, victory the Polaris just kicked it to the side and went pure Indian. Oh, well, at the time they did that, I had a Harley, so I didn't give a shit. <laughs> well, I don't give a shit now because isn't it ten years they stopped supplying the parts and stuff? For the yeah, 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 yeah. Man. The only yeah, victory but... is the Vegas. Gray, aren't you? Looking at Harley's right now. I have been. I've been starting to look at. <laughs> nah, nah. See what Only I, because I'm getting older. Only because I'm getting older, and I want something comfortable to cruise on. Uh -huh. You don't want to be on a bike known for sandals. Yeah, but th those victories are comfortable though. Like like it the uh, really the street glide version of the victory. Yeah, they're they're comfy. I sat on. I haven't rode one yet. I sat on it, and, and uh, the salesman came up, and he's like, you want to take it for a ride? And I'm like, no. I'm like, absolutely not, because I, I just I already knew by sitting on it, if I took it for a ride, I was gone. I was buying it. Yep. And I was like, no, nope, I can't do it. No, nope, I've I'm heard good. stories about that, man. A lot of people go from riding a Harley and get jump on a Victory and fall in love with it. It's mm -hmm. a shame they let it go. Man. Yeah, I know a lot of people that have. I don't it know if that's funny. the same for Indian, though. I don't know. Right. What's funny with uh, yeah. freedom, when we talk freedom, well, Bedlam, you know, man, we were dirty, scrungy looking. Uh, we didn't give no hell about what we looked like. We were free I'm to do it. still dirty and scrungy looking. <laughs> yeah. I want to go around the table and get your viewpoint of does that freedom actually present itself with all these i call them girly bikers okay girly men with the tight pants the shorts uh has it changed <laughs> the meaning, bedlam has it changed what has it changed the meaning of the way we didn't want to conform we did what we want as far as uh the way we looked uh the way we partied the way we you know 
We didn't care if we looked good or not. If we had, you know, some hooker going down on us, we didn't give a shit. If we uh, smelt the high heaven, we didn't have our perfume on. <laughs> None of that. Well, as far as today's bikers, they all God, those fucking are good hair days. bun and fucking flip flops <laughs> and all that bullshit and shorts while they're riding and <laughs> fucking trailering their bikes to fucking here and there and yeah, <laughs> it's not. Mm. No, it's not the same, man. What do you think, yeah. Danny? Man, I know you have some uh, viewpoints uh, being from Chi Town. Some of the stuff we see. Yeah, you know. So here's the thing, man. You know, the old school dude to me. I look at these young bucks out here with the skinny jeans on and all that shit, looking like I call them all fuck boys. But mm. on the Did other hand, though, <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, though, think about it like this. They don't give a fuck what we think about them either. Just like we didn't give a fuck what society thought about us. Good point. So, right. I mean, yeah, but I the fact like I will, I will you say know. them, them little cake, you know, them little fuck boy, cake boys, or whatever. Fuck you. You know they're looking at us for fucking advice and so forth, yeah. and to fucking yeah. see how shit's going, so they can do the same damn thing, but keep their still. Their persona, I guess you could say, is a way. Yeah, yeah. Look. I mean, you know, it's it's like anything, man. It's it's a new generation, so you know, I know Hollywood has a hard time with it. I know I do. Well, we all do. You know, it's hard to to look at the new school and the new new generation and be like, "Wow, you guys are a bunch of fucking clowns." But I mean, think about it. What did the old school dudes think about us when we arrived at the scene? We were fuck boys too back then. You know what I mean? Because we didn't know shit. You know, so yeah. I mean. You know, it's it's just a different, it's a different breed, man. I mean, yeah, they don't have that loyalty like we do. They don't have that uh, respect and honor like we do. But, you know, some of them do. It's just in their own way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. What do you think, uh, Grace, there? I think it has a lot to do with the same thing as, like, when we were kids, our parents hated our fucking music. Yep. So mm -hmm. Now that I'm a fucking grandpa, I hate their music. So, you know, I, it's like that, I think. Well, you know, uh, with me, I can't, like, uh, agree on that because I, I, I love hip-hop and stuff. You know, we came from a generation of Julian Jumping Perez in Chicago. Hell motherfucking yeah. <laughs> You're oh, a little man. bit younger than me, homie. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, you know, going on, well, I'm 48 going on 49 next year. But, you know, then we. 42 Christmas Eve. You're oh, there young you buck, D. Young buck, man. Fucking young <laughs> buck. <laughs> hey, I'll take that. You know what? I'll take that. <laughs> there was a time I used to get mad when older guys would call me the young buck. Now I'm like, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, start getting gray like all of us, man. Uh, so I got more wisdom in my fucking all these grays than he's got on his. <laughs> what's, the de what's the definition to you, Bedlam, of freedom? Mentally, physically, or emotionally? <laughs> okay. Well, mentally, it's well, just... Go. Oh, yeah, we're going to get <laughs> deep here, brother. <laughs> mentally, full fucking escape, man. Just from stress, life, just full focus on, you know, what's in front of you while you're on your bike. That's about it. You know, mm -hmm. physically, you being come, becoming cohesive with that bike and the road. Whether it be on twisties, curves, full fucking straightaways, you, 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 I mean, and just seeing everything around you, and then emotionally, emotionally, man, it's just it's what it's the ability to take everything in around you while you're riding. Isn't you know? it amazing how that happens when you're on too? So. Well, I mean, the, my, the perfect example I can I could give you guys is. A couple years ago, when I was riding, it was on the back roads here in Illinois, and I was riding uh, near a, a horse farm. And I was riding up to it, and there was like five horses up near the rails of the fence. And it was just, it tripped, it kind of tripped me out at one, at one point. But these fucking horses, I mean, I slowed down, and these horses just started running right alongside me. And that's what, that's what kind of threw me off, you know, and they were just, run right alongside me the entire damn way as i was riding i was like i couldn't fucking believe it you know and that was that was a major trip and emotionally for me you know so, 
Danny, when I when I watch uh, Danny's videos, especially when well, he just put out uh, one that we seen where he was riding and stuff. What was going through your head at that moment? Because you look content. You look like you had life by the balls in that video. You know what, man? When I ride, um, everything that's going on in my life just starts to disappear by each mile. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I kind of... I mean, it may sound like a freaking movie scene or something, but like I, I kind of get to a point where I just become one with the road, man. You know what I mean? Like everything just starts to, you know, like when I first get on the bike, my mind's running rapid. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. But every mile, man, them thoughts just start going away, start going away. And before you know it, you're fucking really free. You know, mm -hmm. you got no thought in your mind. You know, you got your head kinked, you know, cocked just a little off to the side because you're zoned out and you're just rolling, man. You know what I mean? Like there ain't there ain't nothing bothering you at that time. You know, your old lady ain't bugging you. The job ain't bugging you. Money ain't bugging you. Nothing's fucking bothering you. You just riding. You know, you're in the air, man. It's it is the closest thing to freedom to being a bird in the moment. You know? I don't I get the, that way until I hit the highway. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm on the highway. I get I get like that all go. the time. Yeah, yeah, I get I get like that on a back road. I, I fuck I get like I mean like when you rolling in the city, it's different. Yeah, that's you know you I mean. got so much shit going on you know around you, so you know you can't really be zoning out. You know you got to be watching your six all day. But yep. yeah, when you're on the back roads, man, like you know like Bedlam was just talking about. That's an awesome story, by the way. Um, you know I've, I've had similar scenes like that where <clears throat> I'm rolling down the road and all of a sudden. You know, the, the the one time, the best time, and, and I couldn't, like, it was it was so awesome. It was so surreal. I didn't even want to videotape it. Like, you know, doing this creator shit that we're doing now, I'm always trying to reach my for my phone and, and get some footage on something, you know. This time, it was just so beautiful, I, I didn't want to. That was my own moment to, sh to think about. Oh, yeah. I had a bald eagle, and this, this dude was flying next to me for at least a couple of miles. And I mean, I'm just rolling one handed and I'm looking over at him and he's just soaring with me, just flying alongside of the road with me, man. That was probably the best moment of my life. Like that, that was the definition of freedom to me, you know. By the way, everyone uh, that is in the chat room right now, Bedlam, Danny B and Graystar do have a YouTube channel. Make sure you guys get over there, man. They got yeah, some. Yeah, we got a lot of catching up to do, apparently. Oh, yeah, Danny's out beating us, man. <laughs> With all your asses. <laughs> Great stuff. You live in Utah where you can have, you know, six wives legally, which is cool to me. But other than that, freedom. Wait, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Let's talk about that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could get back to that yeah. one. But as far as how is it out west when you know you ride, you know ride them mountains and the dirt roads, stuff like that. How is it by you? It's fucking incredible, dude. Like Danny said, you get on there, all your thoughts go away. It's just you and the road. And in the mountains, you get twisties, you get straightaways, you get curves, you get everything up there, man. It's just and. The nice thing about it is there's places around, well, here in Utah anyway, where you can actually stop up in the mountains and have a beer and chat with other independent riders that are out there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just fucking cool. And I long for summertime. It's fucking snowing now. Suck. Rock on. I'm going to put Bedlam and everybody else uh, on uh, check right here uh, or on blast. We were talking about freedom and we know what it comes to as far as riding motorcycles one thing i do miss for all these uh new cats is the way we partied and we partied hard and now it's affecting us because we're older but you know you. <laughs> <laughs> i'm right I'm there gonna... with you hollywood it affects me too bro Right. But we used to really be able to let loose. And that, hey, that could have been like, hey, man, let's get a couple bras. Let's go bang up. And uh, now we'd be called chauvinist pigs. 
but uh, it was a fun time. <laughs> and the women liked it, by the way. The women liked it. They still they, do. Don't let them lie to you. They, <laughs> they, they, still, they, they, they still like some caveman action every now and then. They like that shit. I don't know how many times I've been on a bike and gotten looked at and gawked at by other women, you know, driving down the freeway. It, it's still like that, bro. You're a beautiful bro. man, bro. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It's, it's all this red and white I'm wearing. Uh, what's up, Dark Soul? Let's welcome Dark Soul to the channel. Uh, he has his TikTok as well. But the party in Bedlam, what is the freakiest stuff that you did, man? Remember the old days when you had everybody running around naked? Oh, running man. Oh, shit. <laughs> Come on, man. You told everybody on uh, Discord if you got 100 subscribers, you'd be out there doing the helicopter with your pecker and stuff. Hey, so man, that was for the Viper. Oh, I'm going to throw the <laughs> shit out of Bedlam now. We're going to make them get – we're going to make them do hey, that. If, if I get 100 plus, man, that's the only way you get it. Anyway. <laughs> the, the, everybody go the, fucking subscribe right now. All right. The, the, okay. Everybody knows about the – you know, I know at least one – one of you guys have done it too. You just got totally fucked up, blitzed, and did the picnic table dance. Oh, I know. Come on. Oh, yeah. I'm the only one here. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I did it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've never okay. done that, Brad. Well, I've gotten so, too fucking drunk, and yeah, I ended up stripping on a picnic table down there <laughs> at a rally. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. But, but, what yeah. About, Were you at least uh, stripping for girls? Oh, Dude, I was just fucked up and didn't give a shit. Whoa, <laughs> it was one of those moments. <laughs> and there were, yeah, there were so there, so so we're just, yeah, you, 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 yeah. So the rally, you know, a few of the rallies I you know, go to, it gets too fucking wild, and you just don't give a shit. Right, <laughs> That's what right. I said, man. You either join the party and, you know, be like everybody else or fucking hang back and be the wallflower. Me, I'm not a wallflower. Right. What, about you, Dark, what about you, Dark Soul? I know you a freak. <laughs> that dude. What's up, Dark Soul? <laughs> I know you a freak, man. Uh, I've done some crazy shit, man. I've done some crazy shit. I mean, I, I like bad them talk about streaking. I, I got so wasted one time and everything. I freaking went streaking into the freaking river and stuff with three broads. So, I mean. Nice. <laughs> did, you at least, did you at least blow and go or what, man? Oh, blow and go and fucking suck and, uh, for freaking six, seven hours, man. Oh, yeah, that's roll. too much fucking work for you. I know that, Hollywood. That's too much work for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, when it when it comes to that stuff, I am a firm believer, and everybody knows this from the radio, that you blow and go, man. You shouldn't sit there and waste time making them feel good. No, you're there to feel good for yourself. Blow it and get the hell out of there. That's what I always thought, you know, especially if it was some broad that didn't know your name in case, you know, she came up pregnant. She couldn't track your ass. But <laughs> I'm a little different on that view and everything. Yeah, I blow and go and stuff, but I also get a big smile when I'm getting them off too, man. There's a bunch of kids all, all over Chicago right here, with little man. face tattoos walking around. <laughs> Can you, you imagine a bunch of little fucking Hollywoods running around? Oh my god! <laughs> that is a nightmare for me. Okay, and that, I have to think that China Dolls nightmare is one day somebody like you know twenty five, twenty six is going to come up. Or, hey, man, who the fuck are you? <laughs> what's, what's good, pops? <laughs> You know, but I remember the old biker weddings, man, where they would actually burn the bras. It, it was just beautiful stuff. Uh, Danny, I know you, you're a double freak, man. I know you getting in some of that blow and go stuff. Oh, all day long. But, uh, you know, believe it or not, man, I never did a lot of. You mean you got one right now? What's that? <laughs> you got one going on right now? <laughs> you can't walk that long, brother. <laughs> I mean, you know, mind your business, bro. <laughs> um, believe it or not, like like in the biker scene, I, I've never really uh, did like some hardcore partying. All my hardcore partying came from the gang days, man. Like, 
Like, I mean, there was one time the, the, the I'd say the only like biker party I've ever been like crazy with is um, there was one night, it was a Friday night and I'm walking down, um, I'm going to say Grand Avenue. <laughs> and I don't you know that club. Row, were you? <laughs> no, no, I was by Grand and Hamlin. Oh, so, okay. I'm walking, and, and at this time, I had no idea about biker stuff, about the club scene. I, you know, I was a gangbanger, you know, and I, and there were some people walking into a bar. I walked in the bar. Now, we're talking Chicago, man. I mean, if you if you had somewhat of a mustache going on, wasn't nobody checking your ID. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cared how old you were. It was how you presented yourself. So I walk into this bar behind these people. And I'm hanging out, I'm having a couple beers, and I'm noticing there's a lot of guys with patches and stuff, you know, and I'm not paying much attention. And the next thing I know, I, you know, I got a guy walk up to me, he's like, hey, man, who are you? And I, you know, and I'm like, you know, hey, motherfucker, you in my hood, who are you, you know? And we start having words, and next thing you know, I'm getting checked, and I got a bunch of guys surrounding me. So now, being the smart guy, I'm like, all right. Let's not let's not get too freaking hardcore here. Let's let's talk about this, right? Because I'm about to get hurt here. You know, I'm messing with some big boys, and you know what? You know they're like, "How'd you get in here?" And I'm like, "I walked in behind some people." So needless to say, homie that was on the door, yeah, he wasn't on the door no more, right? So I ended up getting stuck in there, bro. They locked the door, and I didn't walk out of there till Sunday. And and. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I can't talk about on here that we did that night, but or that weekend that I was literally stuck in this clubhouse. But yeah, dude, it was crazy, man. You know, the, I can guess there was a lot of passing <laughs> around. Oh, there was a lot of that, man. You know, as a young guy, I was I was in seventh heaven, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, those are titties. Woo, hey, what's going on here? You know, next thing I know, you know, we're we're skiing and you know and. Yeah, it was it was a blast, man. It was a blast. Did that make you want to get a motorcycle? Yes, it did. <laughs> I, I hung out with them many times after that. I can tell you that much. <laughs> but but you know what? Then they accepted me because they're like, "Oh man, you're cool." You know, yeah, we know you run the neighborhood and blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we got to be friends after that. But that night, it was it started off real sketchy. But at the end of the night, yeah, we're we're all brothers having a great time, man. It was a blast. We're going to have to break them in over at uh, the A-Beta of uh, Iowa rally, man. We're going to have to uh, show them a biker party, I bet. <laughs> We're uh, taking yeah. them on rock. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Graystar, what's up with you, man? I know. Uh, long freak. time ago, you man. Not, Are you able to get – did you partake in the six-wife deal or what over there, man? It's legal. Why not? <laughs> I plead the fifth. Man, if you got one, who wants more? <laughs> We're not talking about your hand, dude. <laughs> no, but back in the day, man, me and a brother we were cruising around, and we ended up in the backlands of where Scotty Tramp Scooter. Scooter, what is it? You Scooter know Tramp. Scooter, Scooter Tramp Scotty, Tramp, man. Scotty. <laughs> Where he was hanging around in Optos. And, and Dude, was, I wonder if he boned every broad he's been in every state, and that would be amazing. But go ahead. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. But uh, yeah, we ended up in a hot tub party. And uh, that lasted all weekend long. Rock on, man. Yeah, kind of fun. I think just the partying is about freedom, it's about letting loose, not giving yeah. a shit about what society says. Uh, yeah. You know, a, a big freaking, it's all about, it truly is about bikes, beer, and broads, man. How's Hog, Rock, tell us about Hog Rock, Bedlam, because I think that has to come the closest to what we're talking about. Well, I mean, what do you want to know? <laughs> I mean, it's just. Dude, Let's it's, talk about parties, man. Dude, it's just, it's, it's an all weekend party. I mean, it starts from, depending on when you get there, you know, but it's, it is an all weekend party. I mean, it starts from the time your tent goes up to Sunday morning when everybody's riding out, you know, it, oh, it's, that feeling. Oh. And it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it, yeah, it's a hell, a hell of a Sunday morning. <laughs> riding out. I don't know how many guys I've seen fall. Hell, I even felt, you know, my body even dropped my bike once. 
Doesn't Hog Rock, doesn't Hog Rock huh? cater to uh, What's that? Hard Rock cater or Hog Rock cater to swingers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they got they have a, they have swingers there. Yep. Rock. Yeah, oh, and good. it's no, no one, nobody. Oh, well, usually nobody unless you get permission. Under twenty-one, there. I think right. it's all that, just straight up adult base, man. Parties. And uh, so. yeah, it, it's they got like several bands throughout throughout the evening there. Uh, usually about two or three bands, and they play till two o'clock in the morning. Uh, so as far as the party scene, you can fucking. Dude, you bring your own liquor. There's town nearby. You can go pick your own up. It is a dry county, though. You know, so usually people bring their own in. Right. And, uh, you Uncle, get all Shaggy. Uncle, Uncle Shaggy. Shaggy. Uncle Shaggy's in the house. Yeah. Hello, Shaggy. Uncle Shaggy. What's up, Shaggy? <laughs> hey, but Danny, yeah. what do you think the difference between the women we knew Compared to now, I think there were a lot more wilder in our day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The women were definitely more wilder back in the day. You know, back in the day, <clears throat> it seemed like to me like, you know, everybody was just out to have a good time. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays, you guys everybody's, gotta go out to have a, everybody's <laughs> out to have a good time, but the women are kind of a little stuck up now. Um, they're very picky and choosy and. You know, they want that pretty boy or something like that. You know, back in our day, it seemed like to me and women didn't give a shit. They just wanted to get it on with a cool biker and have a good time. You know, it didn't didn't matter if he was fat, ugly. I mean, let's let's be honest, we're all fat and ugly. Right. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, they didn't they, they didn't have pretty boys to choose from back then. That might be the difference. You know, but <laughs> but yeah, they were way wilder back then, man. They were they were about that life. Well so, when yeah. I was when I listen, down at Hog Rock, you see that you see all the wild ladies. I mean, I've seen a butt ass nigger riding on fucking the top of tanks on got you know on the front of the bikes, fucking laying down on the tanks and shit. <laughs> that, I mean, the old school shit, you know. Yeah, but you nowadays, all that. nowadays the girls that are doing that, they're with that guy. We're talking back in the day. I mean, nah, the man, man, these, down there, man, these bitches well, showed up by themselves looking for somebody. Yeah, yeah that's you know? what I'm saying. You you still get uh, that that by themselves yeah. shit down there. Yeah, you know, well, we'll check that out. Dude, when you listen, like I said, though, you got swingers down there too, though. So, right, you know, right. You know, if if we're, we're gonna have to go down there, Hollywood. Oh, we going? <laughs> going. <laughs> Hollywood's gonna be in G down there. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, when you listen to uh, say Dago and Criminal History, uh, rest in peace, Dago from the Sons of Silence, uh, awesome band. Uh, he used to do the songs about uh, the way the parties were, and God, we can't leave out David Allen Coe. Uh, you know, I know I play some of them songs on the radio and stuff, and the hate mail that I get from it. it <laughs> like, damn, man. Uh, you guys really don't know how to party. <laughs> right. Uh, but I think the party's about the freedom, isn't it, Dark So? Yeah, it's a. I'm gonna tell you, I've seen some things, especially when I was a bouncer. You know, at some of the this, the Gold Club, and you know, the the world. You see some stuff in New Orleans. You know, when you're a bouncer there, Big Daddies and stuff there on Bourbon Street. Man, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> tell them, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, man, I've been down there, man. I love that fucking New Orleans. Yeah, they got a place called the Dungeon, and uh, if you yep. want your you want your kink on? Uh, that's the place to go, man. And if so, you know, if you know about the dungeon, man, now you're worrying me if that you were getting in one of them uh, leather scoops and stuff like that in there. You had a mission in your ass. You worrying me, man? Worrying <laughs> you. But anyway, yeah, New Orleans ain't the same after Katrina. Hell no. Uh -uh, no, man. it's not the same. No. It used to. It used to be really wild, but before Katrina, it got it settled down a little bit. Mm. Since I've been down there, it became more family oriented. I mean, half of Bourbon Street is more jazz yeah. clubs and stuff now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Before Katrina, man, you could walk down Bourbon Street and you'd see shit all up in the balconies and the windows, every damn thing. You know, it was just one. It was. It just, I went down there. I went down there during Christmas, and it was like Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to set a beans. The titties are flying. Mm-hmm. 
Right. <laughs> Yesterday I did a video on the war on bikers. I think that the reason why cops hate us so much is they can't do shit like we do. They're limited by what society thinks they should be. They can't get out there and get all freaky and do all that kind of shit. I think what a do you lot think? of them just get mad because their wives want us. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Graystar? I think police want to be us and can't be us. Therefore, they become a cop. <laughs> and they're probably the ones that got beat up in high school. I agree. Not all of them, though. What do you mean, Danny? Not all of them are punks. I'll tell you a story. When I was a shorty, man, um, I had a cop. He just kept messing with me all the time, like messing with all of us in my neighborhood. And there was one night we're in the alley. It's like two in the morning. And um, I look at this dude and I'm like, you know, man, we didn't have that fucking badge on, bro. I beat your motherfucking ass. And uh, that was the worst thing I ever said, because he walked to the back of his car, took all of his gear off. I said, come on, bro. Let's go in this motherfucking alley real quick in this, in this gangway. And we went in the, in the gangway and we banged it up for, well, I banged it up for about three and a half seconds. And the rest <laughs> of the bang up was me getting my my whole ass whooped. <laughs> and you know what? He never messed with me after that because I knocked, I, knocked, I knocked him pretty good. But I tell you what, we had a mutual respect after that. So they're not all punk ass. <laughs> they're not all punks, man. You well, those have are balls to do that job in the first place. I'll give them that. No doubt. No doubt. Those are shy town cops for you, man. They're a different breed. <laughs> yeah, they're gangbangers too, bro. They just, you know, they're different, different, different way. Yeah, yeah. I watch Chicago PD. I wouldn't fuck with them. You haven't seen nothing unless you were yeah. up. You haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, the shit that me and Hollywood went through. You know, you you don't get to see that on TV. Right. No. <laughs> Flashlights uh, in the head, fucking batons, right. them putting a gun in your mouth, strip searching you butt naked on the side of the street at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, bro. You don't get they to don't... see that on TV. No. That's why you never fucking see TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then if it's like that, why the fuck is Chicago the way it is now? Dude, we're talking what? Um, uh 1980s, 19, you know, remember Burke, man? That guy was fucking shy rack now, though. That's because they're not allowed to do their jobs, man. That's a lot of it. You know, a lot of it is that. A lot of it is, you know, and, and I actually seen that up here in Wisconsin for a little bit. You know, the cops see kids hanging out and they're like, oh, you know, they're, they're just, they're just, you know, kids having fun. You know what I mean? And then later on, they get around 19, 18, 17. Uh, yeah, they're just kids hanging on the corner. They're not doing nothing. And then before you know it, you got a hundred badass gangbangers, you know, gangbanging, and now it's out of control. You know, and the yeah. other thing is their hands are tied behind their back, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it just it's it's a fine line, you know. I mean, they can only do so much, you know what I mean? I gotta give CPD credit though when uh they seen us, uh, say playing baseball or something. They used to jump in and yeah. all that shit with us too. Oh we yeah, were... they did. But those I are. Remember, different... I remember when cop... I was a kid, man. My favorite game is I would stand in front of my mom and dad's house, and when a cop would come, I'd, I'd walk out to the middle of the street, turn around, and take <laughs> off running, just to fuck with them, right? And they'd chase <laughs> me all over. And this one narc, man, I kept doing this to this guy like every night, man. I'd mess with him. Finally, one day I come out of my house and I'm away to the store to go get, you know, something to drink, whatever. And I'm walking down uh, Armitage Avenue and I'm walking down Armitage Avenue. And next thing I know, man, a cop comes up on the curve and he didn't even get out of the car. He had the gun pointed at me. He's like, get in the back now. And I'm like, what the, you know, what's going on, man? I'm like, all right, man, no problem. Got my hands up. I get in the back of the car. He takes me by the train tracks. And now I'm like worried because, you know, there's some cops that are about that life in Chicago, you know, and I'm like, yeah, well, who, who did I fuck up with? You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, and I'm asking him all kinds of questions. What did I do? What's going on? You know, and this guy's saying nothing to me. He was an old school cop, an old school narco. And uh, he turned around. He put the gun in my mouth and he said, the next time you run from me, I'm going to kill you. 
And I'll tell you what, I never played that game after that again. So, <laughs> there's some cops about that life, Grace Star. Believe me. Shy town, man. I grew up in Oakland, man. It's pretty close to that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Same scenario. Yeah. Yep. Well, <laughs> it's messed up. Uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Just thinking about that shit now. Then again, I've had <laughs> you go I've had on all night long about that shit. See, that running shit, that running shit from the cops. We used to call that running, you know, cherries and berries and shit. Okay, <laughs> you just take off running when you see the motherfucker. Well, you know right, what? Right. Profiling is a pretty big issue, and I know yeah. we've all had encounters with cops. Yes, What's sir. the worst one? Uh, had them. The worst? Oh, no, 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 no. Was, I've never fucking been busted by the motherfuckers. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry to say. Dad taught me never to fucking get caught if I did fucking crime. So I learned my no, lesson I'm a long time about ago. Riding on your, just riding on your bike, man. I have never been fucking pulled over. Never. Not on my bike. Honestly, oh, now my nephew, I got a son in law who has, but. Yeah, I mean, I could be I busting fucking, fucking over a hundred on my bike over. and never got hit. Never. <laughs> I can't imagine not ever getting pulled over. <laughs> right? That's man, it's, 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 me, man, I don't I've been even know how over. that would feel. <laughs> I, now you're going to fucking jinx me for the year. <laughs> <laughs> first time getting on a bike and riding with more than three people at a time, I get pulled over. Well, yeah. I tell you what, it was, uh, Danny, you know this, how bad it was, uh, probably about 1995 when it was really bad here. Oof, uh, yeah. They were, they were pulling everybody over with patches, and they just throw you in the dirt, kick the shit out of you. It didn't matter mm -hmm. if it was. Well, see, that's, that's, the, that's the difference right there. You get patches. I'm not wearing any fucking patches on the back, man. Hey, man, I've been if profiled you're going that way route. more. You know what? I was profiled way more times without a patch than I ever was with one, believe For it or not. Sure. Really? Yeah, oh, I've never dude, been. In Chicago, rolling down Fullerton Avenue on, with a lowrider, I would get pulled over, strip searched. I'd have them search my vehicle. I'd get back in my vehicle. They cut all, they took razor blades and cut all my custom interior all out and shit, saying that they're searching for something. Dude, I've. I've been profiled way more times without a patch. Way you guys more. riding in the wrong fucking areas. <laughs> I got profiled. I'm not bedlam anymore, days. Hollywood. This guy's too <laughs> nice, man. I don't know. You know what? He you never know, lived that life. Back on this motherfucker. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna do? Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm with Gray Star. We need to run a background check on this dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we're gonna do is with the throttle yeah. member, we're gonna invite you up. And I'm gonna take you over to Humble Park. They got some of the best Mexican food around, and we're gonna play in Humble Park for a while. <laughs> 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 I'll fit right in. It's Actually, awesome. they got way better Puerto Rican food in Humble Park than they do Mexican food. Oh, they do. It I got on what side of the park you're on. Right, right. Either that, we'll take them down to the south side and all that good stuff hey. at the 76 and Yates, maybe see how fun they get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to break your cherry, Bedlam. I can promise you that. <laughs> you just want me to get fucking nailed up by a fucking cop. That's it. <laughs> you, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I kind of do now. I kind of yeah, do. I, can't, I cannot believe you're this old in the biker world and you haven't experienced police brutality. I can't, I, I can't phantom that. I'm, 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 the fucking, I'm the idiot that would fucking hit back. <laughs> Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know. I don't know. I'm a, like I said, I'm so old school. I'm gonna pick up the nearest fucking thing and beat your ass. <laughs> I got out of a game for hitting a Try that with CPD. That's what I have to love. Cheap <laughs> there right now. He's on the south side. Yeah, try that with the CPD trying to swing on them. No, <laughs> they fight back. <laughs> you sit there and you take your ass whooping so is what it is. It, is it that way <laughs> today or? Oh yeah, day? Oh, it's it, every day in Chicago, every man. Day. Every day, every day, dude. Well, it's Hollywood, every... did you hear about Louisiana? They got in the, the it passed the House. It's in the Senate now about the uh, motorcycle profiling. There oh yeah, Louisiana. yeah, it's sitting in the Senate right now. That's good news, man. That's good news. Well, That's you know what, Louisiana, though, right? 
I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to lie, man. I lost a lot of faith in, uh, the biker rights movement. I really have. I lost a lot of faith in it, but Why? that's another story. Why? Right. Yeah, it take just, it well, you'll see what I'm talking about. You can't when you say look at that, not tell me why. Come well, on. you look at a bait, okay? They're more worried about cars and automation than they are with a lot of the stories we've been covering as far as motorcyclists getting killed and hit and runs and drunk driving. And they ain't doing a damn thing about it, man. They ain't doing nothing. It's not even on their list. And that's an epidemic to me as a motorcyclist. I totally agree. People that get hit for hit and die by some young broad texting on a phone, and she does just gets a slap on the fucking wrist. Right. What can we do about it? Maybe we should start something, some kind of new movement about it. Well, that's a bait supposed to be doing that well, if shit. If they're not doing it, fuck. What do we do? Go okay. ahead, Dark. So. You see about the way the justice system is and everything. That kid that uh, shot and killed the uh, three kids in the school and everything. He, he he's not getting much and stuff. And here it is that truck driver in Colorado that you know. Hundred yeah, and ten fucking years. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get that. Uh, he yeah, he's in the wrong. First off, he at the very beginning and everything. He told them that he had problems with the trailer, but he made a choice to still take the load. Now there's his responsibility right there. But at the same time, he passed a burnout, you know, an off ramp and everything could have stopped him instead of plowing in, but he kept on going down. For 110 mm -hmm. years, there's the big problem is where the, they're letting people, uh, you, know, you know, like the rubber dope stuff in Chicago, man, they put them in prison or everything, and then 10 minutes later, they're right out the door and they go commit another one. And, you know, how many times have they been doing that in their thing? Uh, well, the like, drug drunk drivers thing is what really bugs me uh if you ever watch the drunk drivers usually walk away everybody else is killed and stuff yeah, isn't that a trip <laughs> yeah but when it comes to motorcyclists because i've been covering this a lot more because the issues like holy shit man you only get six years because you got pissed off that a guy gave you the finger so you killed them with your car that's insanity, man. Six yeah. years. Yeah. And then when that kid, the kid got killed, I was like, man, this kid's only 22 years old, man. His whole life is gone. What are you going to give her for doing it? Like nothing? Yeah. Come on. This it's should be like, a serious issue. It's like we decide to get on two wheels and our life just doesn't fucking matter anymore to them. They look at us like we're nobodies. Yeah. That's what they do. What about and, the... Uh, have you heard what's the latest on that kid that freaking ran over all those Marines and stuff that, in that MC up north? What's the status uh, on that kid now? If you're talking about the New Hampshire uh, seven, yeah. I don't talk about his name, but it's still going through court. It's still going. You know the the ownership of the trucking company pleaded guilty, but the cops knew that this guy was already busted for drugs and stuff like that, and they still let him drive with the CDL, and he ended up killing seven uh, people with the Jarheads uh, Motorcycle Club. And I think, uh, you know, well, David just put here, Abate is doing what they can. I'm Florida Lighthouse member. Uh, politicians, they blow us off. Well, then why not assert that we are a heavy voting block? You know, one thing that Popeye and OG from Texas Biker Radio taught us, when you get together, you organize, you can do everything. We beat that incumbent uh, Reina by 20 points. We're a, we're a big major voice, man. We all band together. That's mm -hmm. a big if, though. That's, I mean, that's <clears throat> the biggest word in the dictionary. If. Yep. If. <laughs> what do you think, Danny, about uh, what these people get as far as sentencing when running over biker? Oh, man, I think it's total bullshit. <clears throat> I mean, it seems like to me, like, you know, back back many years ago, I mean, shit, almost even before some of us were riding, um, you know, bikers were looked at as trash. You know what I mean? And and cars would cut us off and, and try to run us off the road because they hated us. But now it's like it's the same thing, but society more or less accepts us 
but it's it's the politicians and the laws that don't. You know, well, I mean, for example, remember the D C girl that got killed by that broad when she yeah, ran into. I mean, you know, uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy, man. I mean, you know, you see, my my biggest thing has always been like we were talking about police earlier, and my biggest problem's always been is how come when a cop gets killed, whether it's ran over or shot, the whole fucking world shuts down. And we're all looking for that one guy. But somebody can run, all f five of us right now, can run us off the road and murder us. And we'll be lucky to even make the news. You well, know what I'm saying? I mean, it's missing, just... The it's missing person cases. I mean, they, they're all popular. You know, a movie star goes missing or something. But yeah, uh, two bucks uh, person, you know, you know, you're know, like your kid got lost in this up, and next thing you need, it's been four or five months later. I got a brother who, he can't find his daughter. It's been nine months. But yet, a popular kid that did on YouTube and everything, the whole world stopped and got you know to look for that. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous on all fronts of this stuff. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's it's ridiculous. It's the, it's the persona of the biker guys. See, that's <laughs> that's what it boils down to. We're still looked at as what Hollywood described earlier as that. You know the 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 dredge. Okay, of the you know of society. When as a I bi first bi got into my technology job, coming from my background, and I got into technology, I was like a fish out of water there, man. Mm -hmm. And my first boss said something that sticks true, and it totally makes sense to this: perception is rule. Yeah, it's all about the perception. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's well, we're gonna right. take. We're going to take a quick commercial break, then we're going to come back with our first segment, and that is Bedlam's Paint. June 30th through the 2nd, a lot of us are going to be up at the Abate of Iowa Rally, the Freedom Fest. It's a party. Make sure you guys come up and uh, join us up there. It's going to be a ball. We're going to have to break Danny in up there. Bedlam, you got your segment right now. What's up with your segment? Let's go into the unlucky green paint. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I heard that before. The greatest yeah. myth of all. Yeah, <laughs> the biggest myth of all. Now, the it, it, everybody knows. I don't. I mean, the WW two factor of this, right? It, where it became on. It was actually unlucky. Green's actually unlucky even before that because during um. Yeah, it, it just means misfortune and every damn thing else if you go into the superstition factor of it, okay? Uh, you know, feelings through uh, the centuries on it, you know, the, the phrases like big green, fucking monster, there, Danny, the, after your last bite, <laughs> which is what got me on this. <laughs> and then uh, just, it, 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 they... Let's see how do how do I want to put this? The purpose, you know, like it's it's always been a factor as far as superstitious wise. But when WW two happened and we were using bikes, the Harley was actually using the W uh, was it the W two Ls? I think it was. But when they were using bikes for uh, the communications and transporting our messages back then, you know, the German snipers would actually fucking pop them on purpose. But and then when they were brought back to the states, all the bikes then that weren't used, they were still considered bad luck because they were already all worn out and torn down and so forth. And 
were breaking down easily and then actually being sold back to the general public at the time. So is that where that, that myth started from, was the war? The war? Well, it's part of that and then, like I said, past superstitions because they used to use arsenic, okay, to make green dye, okay, several, several shades of green dye. And arsenic being a drug, if, you, if, you, if it was on fabric you wore back in the day or on wallpaper or anything that, of that nature and it got damp, you would either get real sick or you'd die. <laughs> right. yeah. So that's why, I mean, you, that's why we even have an emoji logo. You know, you see the, the emoji logo of the green sick guy. <laughs> so, I mean, it, I green has always been a fallback. I had no idea it came from there. Yeah, that's why green has always been a bad luck thing. It's a superstitious thing. And actually, now, now that I actually think about it, I do know one guy. He has a bike. He's wrecked it twice, and it's green. <laughs> He's wrecked it, dropped it at least 10 times. <laughs> so... Yeah, and he's had, had it stolen. <laughs> and you know, got it, it back. Sucks because green is a killer ass color on a bike. It looks cool. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. But like I said, it it falls back. You know, if if you you know, it falls back to just being a bad luck thing for eight for centuries. You know, and I mean, even what was it before WW two when uh, Harley Davidson was uh, racing the British, the Brits. They actually had green on their bikes then as well. The Brits did, but they always, and but Harley always lost the races, even though their bikes weren't green. <laughs> it's, it's weird. <laughs> I gotta say, that Danny's Green Monster was a badass freaking bike. The paint job. First of all, her name was Viva La Loco. Okay. <laughs> 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 was it called the Green Monster? It was my Vida Loca. <laughs> Viva La Loca. Cheers to that. I've had, I've had, well, I had, I had my Cholo bike that was green. I had um, the bike that I, I used to call Murder because she was black and green. I've had like two or three black and green bikes. Have you checked bikes. up on the people that you sold the bikes to? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't care. No, I didn't care. Did you ha ever have any problems with them when you? No, them? no, no, I didn't. My old my my old street colors from Game Banger days were black and green. So I've always liked black and green. That's always uh, been my shit. No, bro. I was a Wilo. Rock on. Yeah. Uh, damn. But who do you, did you look up? Who's some of the best uh, painters out there? I have to say, West Coast man, West Coast can throw some paint. Man, as far as paint jobs, I, that's a variety, and on the the person that you know what you're looking for uh, when you're going to look for paint, because that's a big uh, field. I could, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, it, that would all boil down to the own owner of the bike and what they're looking for. I you think know, that's what like tattooing, do. right? I, I, you can't, you can't, yeah, it's like tattooing. You, you just can't walk in the shop and say, Hey, this is what I want. Because when it, when it boils down to a paint job, it's, it's going to be down to what, you know, you draft out what they can do and how long they can do it, how much detail, you know, it's a big perspective, you know, and then it's going to be the amount of money that you're going to get charged for doing it. You know, same thing in the tattoo world. So, I mean, as far as. Yeah, but some of the paint jobs that you've seen, say, magazines or in person, do you think the West Coast style is the best East uh, Coast, Chi Town uh, type or Florida? You know what? I think more more independent shops are best, not big companies. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Because they put more effort into it. Okay, and they put more thought into it, you know, and what you, you know, that owner of that bike wants, you right. know, and they're going to try to do the best they can well, before a big, you know, because most, most, I'll say most of the big places, yeah, they'll just spray it, get it done, get it out. That's their objective in collector yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather go to an independent guy before any big, any big place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, independent guy is going to take his time, and he's going to yep. put his own touch to it. I mean, yep. I, I'd say ninety that's like a, shit, that's probably like a ninety percent of the motorcycles you see at bike shows 
they're 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 painted by independent guys. They're not painted by some big top yep. name brand guy. You know? You're not gonna yeah. take a bike to make them. Most of the top name no. guy. Well, <laughs> most of the most of the big name guys they send their bike their paint jobs out to be painted by independent shops, but those shops are never mentioned. You know what you I mean? Got it. Ron Berkowitz, uh, Uncle Shaggy says, but I think you are right. The independents can throw down. Uh, yeah. I think it's in their blood uh, and stuff. I'm kind of uh, partial to uh, West Coast because of the lowrider scene. Uh, you know, if you ever look at lowriders and the paint on that shit, my God. Uh, yeah. They transferred over to uh, a bike. It's just amazing. You know, West Coast does have something good, I guess. Did Indian Larry? <laughs> Did Indian Larry paint his own, or did he send it off? That what I, I would know. have to look into. I, I don't mean, know. I don't know. Yeah, that's one thing I would have to look into. Cool looking paint too. Yeah, he right. does. Right. How much do you think a paint job should uh, go for, Dark Soul? Oh, uh, my <laughs> buddy, I posted it in Discord for a uh, freaking two years ago. Uh, here's a guy here in Williamsburg, PA. Uh, it was cost uh, my buddy seven thousand eight hundred dollars to do it, but it was a very detail. Uh, it was a tribute to his dad that uh, was in a C one thirty that crashed uh, along with his buddy. So it's got the C one thirty on the right side of the tank. Has this picture, detailed black and white picture of his dad on the the lower fenders right below the tank, the side fenders. And on the very back, he's got a tombstone with all the names and stuff in very detail. In the very front, he's got all the emblems of the military, all the branches with the American flag painted across the front of it and stuff. On the left side is the Apache helicopter that he uh, worked on when he was in the military. And that oh. bike, very detailed. Those, oh. bikes, those tribute bikes, I really love. I see a good bit of them up there. It's just like the Independence. You know, that are out there, if you find them, it's just like a tattoo artist. You, you can find that one tattoo artist, you want to keep going back to him because he does a phenomenal job. Yeah, you're, like, you're talking the airbrushing and all that, man. That, that gets into the detailed work. That's right I there. I feel like that's a, a personal preference and it's really priceless. I mean, yeah. you, for what you want, you're going to pay whatever it is you have to pay to get it, right? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll say air, anything airbrushing. That is, anything that creates a lot of detail is going to cost you a, a great amount of money, you know, to have mm -hmm. done. Now, if you're just having a spray and go and some pinstripes thrown on, it ain't going to cost you no seven grand. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting in a detailed airbrushing and so forth like that, it, that's going to be expensive. Now, I, I, as far as like those vinyl wraps they have, I don't think, I think that's less. It may be less than uh, for uh, than airbrush. This is a fine example sure of right not now. always. Uh, let's see, what you know, but who you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, with that, we can run right into Danny's segment. Uh, well, since well, we I got a question. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead, Dark Soul. Bedlam, what do you think about that dipping? The dip now they've been doing, or as paint wise. That's that's the same. That's to me. That's vinyl, that vinyl shit. It's the same okay. difference. I mean, because all they're doing is laying on the the picture down on that water. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've seen it, and that, I don't think that that costs as much as airbrush. Yeah, I really don't. It shouldn't. It well, we don't, it just depends on who you're going to. It depends on who you're going to, because that's that rap <laughs> shit as well. None of this shit's cheap anymore, though. <laughs> Going into Danny's uh, talking about, uh, you know, the sound and stuff. How do you match the the sound of some of this uh, wicked paint jobs to make it come alive? Uh, um, you know, it just depends on what kind of quote. I hate to call it that, but what kind of quote unquote theme you're going with? You know what I mean? I mean. Um, if you're, if you're going to do like a low rider style bike, then, you know, you, you, you're probably going to do a little more sound than the average guy. You know what I mean? If you're going to do a uh, big wheel bagger, then you're going to do, you know, subs in the bags, you're going to do, you know, highs, mids all over and stuff like that. You know, if you're an everyday rider, that's just going to get like a, 
a uh, patriotic paint job or whatever, you know, something like that, then you might not go too big on your sound system. You know, it just it all depends on what kind of theme you're going with, in my opinion. Dark Soul, you got uh, a badass bike. What kind of sound system you got in it? Well, that's the Harley Davidson Factory one, uh, Stage Two, when they called it or whatever uh, for the CVO. It does pretty well, good. It's, it's crystal the, clear. I mean, the boom audio stuff. Yeah, man. the boom. They had the boom audio system. Uh, it it does all right for what I need it for. Mm -hmm. uh, that don't, I, I'm just curious. I mean, that don't really make sense to me. Why would you, Why would you change up your speaker system and your radio system just because of the paint job on your bike? Well, well, like it's Danny, a, it's a style of bike that you're building. I mean, if it's, it's it, it depends on individual more or less. You know, right. I mean, somebody like you, yeah, you just want to do an old school paint job or whatever kind of paint scheme that you like. You're just gonna do that on your bike, and that's it. You know, there's other guys like me that got that gangster flavor. You know that, yeah, you know we're gonna do some kind of lowrider paint job or a gangster looking paint job, whatever kind of paint job we're gonna do. A lot of metal flake. You know, mm -hmm. shit like that, some gold flag stuff like that. Well, we like that louder music. We like that hip hop vibe. We like that low rider music and stuff like that. So we're gonna put a bigger sound system in it because we we want to hear that. You know what I mean? It just depends on what you're into, in my opinion. Oh, okay. It's because you're a young cat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had... see, I'm probably the oldest one in here, and I totally agree with you, brother, because I'd be wanting some bass. At least too. I got somebody on my side with all these old ass motherfuckers on here. <laughs> no, 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 old school. Blah, 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 blah. Old school. <laughs> Don't be jealous when you hey when your hearing goes out before mine. I'm don't fucking him cry. <laughs> That's all right. I want to hear you talking shit. I'm okay with it. <laughs> hey, well, what do you think? Spectrum. I had a Geo Spectrum with uh, four fifteens and four tens and two eights in the back seat. Oh, oh yeah, there, there you go. go. Jesus. Old Greybeard over Christ, here bumping. Man. What do you got to say about that, Bedlam? <laughs> yeah, what, when the hell did you have that old Geo doing that shit? <laughs> When I was 16 years old, man. Yeah, before the day, nice, 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 nice. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, what do you think, Danny? Of the uh, stock Harley system. You think it's? Uh, I think it's <laughs> fucking complete junk. Boom, mm -hmm. boom, audio. I mean, it's you know, it's it's like I was saying. You know, it depends on what you're into. You know, what you like. You know, I mean, like Dark Soul. You know, he's okay with it, so that's fine. Like you know, I've had the boom audio. And I, you know, it blew up right away because I was running way too many watts to it. Because I like my music loud, you know. I'm, I, you know, it just comes from that old Chicago days, you know, bumping mm. down the block, you know. So, um, but in my opinion, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you if you do some boom audio, some hog tunes, and you and you set it all up right, it could sound pretty damn good, you know. I mean, it could sound really good and really loud, you know. Mm. But for what the the kind of music I play. And the way I play it, loud as hell, it's just not for me. You know, it doesn't yeah, handle that kind of that power. Bass coming through still. Me, yeah. I'm playing Metallica or Iron Maiden. You know, I Megadeth, play everything, you know? man. Yeah, I, pl <laughs> I play everything. You know, I play, I play from Ozzy Osbourne, Metallica. I play old school hip hop. I play the new school stuff. You know, I, I play techno. The... I play freestyle. Uh, I play everything. He wants now, see, I kind of, I kind of agree with Shaggy said right there with the ape hangers. The old school, no radio, and so forth. Oh, and uh, I mean, you're the you know, I, I, mean I can do that. Honor. I can do that <laughs> definitely. Okay. <laughs> you're the only but, two old white boys out here with no style. I mean, of course you agree. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, you don't have to have. You are the style if you're on the, if you're old school. So I don't care, man. You don't have to. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I can't hate you for that. That's that's a good comeback. I like yeah. That. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at that stage. I like the balance. I still like to hear my motor and my pipes and stuff and everything, but yet at the right. same time, listen to my tunes, you know. So yep. yeah, I'm at that yep. balance stage right now. It's when I listen balance. to music, I I'm want with my that. neighbors to hear it too. So, oh, yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. like I said, I'm, Hollywood's gonna experience that this summer. When, when you ride with me, if you do have a radio, just turn it off because you're not gonna hear it next to me. Yeah, I don't do that either. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm in front of you so I can hear mine. <laughs> you still won't hear it, bro. I'm telling you, man. It's, it's stupid. It really is. 
hey, I Grace, can't wait to ride next to Bedlam. Yeah. I'm playing some old freestyle the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if Bedlam's got any any good motor work done, but you can't you can't fucking get away from me. So I can't wait for that ride. I really can't. <laughs> I'm gonna t- I'm gonna torture him all the way. <laughs> By the time we get to where we're going, he's gonna have his hat flipped up. He's gonna be banging <laughs> some old school fucking G unit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get his ass. <laughs> What's up, Hollywood? <laughs> what do you got for tech to the, uh, for this show, man? What kind of tech? I was actually looking at a. Fucking- get to your mic, man. What? I can't hear you when you're away from the mic. My name is Mike. What are you talking about? Yeah, now it is. <laughs> I was actually looking at a new Ducati that came out. And it's called the Multistrata V4. And it has a radar, front and rear radar. Wow. Yeah. What the hell is that for? Well, I guess like in a smart helmet, where it, the rear radar is to help you. So you you can uh, it helps avoid the blind spots. Mm-hmm. Ducati and, came out with that. All right, BMW already did that the last two years. Oh, well, I'm just saying. I just found that Ducati's <laughs> coming out with it now. And do you I think? Uh, kind of cool. th- Do you think dark uh, so that kind of takes a r- away from the experience of the rider, the radar? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, you, that's going with more laziness wise and everything. I mean, when you're on that hill, you need to turn your head and see what's on the left and right of you. Keep your head on the swivel. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, you constantly look. I'm, I'm a truck driver, so same thing. I'm in my truck. I'm doing on my bike. I mean, every 20 seconds, I'm looking. So my eyes are constantly, you know, moving left to right and towards the back and stuff. You know. The way I look at it, though, is anything to help us bikers from fucking getting hit. From behind or from the side, why not? <coughs> you know, if it helps, it helps. Right. Why diss it? Uh, Charlie says, "Danny, only us Detroit and Chicago cats know about freestyle." <laughs> you got that right. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Danny? You think you could uh, wear an apparatus where it has radar and hoods and all that stuff? Absolutely not. I didn't even understand what you just said. It's actually just a little <laughs> box, like about that big. That goes um, underneath your. Uh, Look, there's right only right. one box this big that I'm interested in, and and it it sure the fuck ain't that. You ain't gonna fill a box that big. <laughs> hey, hey, tight. hey, listen, listen now. All right, come on. It's my dream. Let me fucking tell it, okay? <laughs> you know what? It's funny as hell. We got to get this for Shaggy for next Christmas, a radar, put it on that old iron head or something. He has. <laughs> <laughs> he has a hard time with technology, man. We got to see if he uh, knows how to handle one of them uh, radar things. On the hey, bike. man, I, I feel Shaggy. I have a hard time with this stuff, too. Hey, maybe we can get him an eight track player to pu- put on his bike. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. maybe can bring his old tapes out. <laughs> you might laugh, but those old eight track players are going for big money right now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Big I, money. I know one thing. I, as far as uh, the cop radar, having it torn apart, instead of having it in a box and everything, hidden on the bike, because you know certain states don't allow you to have that radar system or thing. I watched a guy he had a Peterbilt and everything. He had it on a toggle switch. He got fooled over because uh, you know the Virginia's got that no radar policy shit oh, and. Yeah. Uh, he fucked with them for freaking three hours. They, they, <laughs> they, they'd be out there searching and everything. They walk away and they go back to the car and everything. He flipped the switch on and they thing that is going off in their car and he turns it off when it starts coming back and everything. They sitting there searching his truck trying to find out where that damn radar was. That's funny <laughs> shit right there. If you have it on the bike, that'd be worth something right there. Yeah, they, 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 Either that, we got to get it for Bedlam, man. I think Bedlam would be all confused too. I think I got enough reasons to get pulled over. I don't want to add to it. <laughs> yeah. that I'll find a way to put a CB on my damn bike. <laughs> Fucking outrun them damn cops. Oh, shit. <laughs> Do some smoky and abandoned shit on them. Yeah. Fuck yeah. We're going, we're going bike style. Bedlam and abandoned. Bedlam and abandoned. 
Damn right. <laughs> yeah, but you never got pulled over, so what the hell are you worried about? Yeah, no shit, right? I still say we need to do it's a because you on. don't get caught, motherfuckers. Uh, Who said I stopped? <laughs> You don't hey, where are you from, Bedlam? <laughs> He's down hey, where the Where are you from, Bedlam? Man, I'm down here on the Illinois side, on the uh, opposite side of St. Louis, man. He's a Shaggy territory. I'm like five, ten minutes from St. Louis downtown. Uh, hey, Shaggy, run that background check on dude, man. I'll get to you. Hey, man, Shaggy, don't be running shit. <laughs> I'll holler at you in a little while, bro. <laughs> run that check on this dude. I don't know about this cat no more, man. He never been pulled over. You ain't gonna find, you ain't gonna find Jack. <laughs> I remember when I was twelve. <laughs> oh. I remember actually I got a backtrack. Like I remember video. when I was eight, actually. <laughs> so anyway, this radar stuff, the front one, man, you can control it by four different speeds. Like like in a car, the, the new cars, if you ever get a new rental car now, you get behind a fucking you you'll be cruising, you get behind a car and it'll fuck just slow your car down. You can actually control that on your bike now. Well, on this Ducati, anyway. Dude, that'd get you killed if it takes over. It could, yeah. yeah. Screw man, that. I hate that shit on my rig, man. They put that shit and stuff on the rig where it applies the damn brakes and yeah, stuff. And you know what I'm, I'm talking never... about. Oh, hell no. Oh, man. I fucking... Hey, Steph. How you doing, Steph? What's up? That has scared the shit out of me, man, of something taking uh, control of my bike. See, and that, yeah, and that. that's yeah, I, would like I was that. thinking and see technology, man. It's some of it's good, some of it's not so good. And I think that right. is not so good. Well, yeah. I got, hey, how I don't even like ABS. How right. concerned uh with your significant others? I know Danny don't have one that's uh steady. Uh when you go out riding. He's got Rosie that. and her five fucking sisters. <laughs> Got that. What are you talking about? I'm I plan on having a threesome later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Your two hands in a video don't count. Uh <laughs> keep that on TikTok. It says who? A <laughs> what I do on my Saturday nights is my business, okay? <laughs> uh again, if you're the uh, comment section, uh, don't forget, uh, and the replay of this video to go see these guys' YouTube channel and TikToks. Uh, Bedlam, how's your uh, old lady when you take off on a ride, man? Was she nervous at first when you first met her, found out you rode? Man, she, yeah, she wasn't all about it. She wasn't all, but she, I mean, she, she rides now with me. Uh, but yeah, she's always worried about my ass on the bike. And then, uh, in 2018, it made her even more nervous, you know, after I had my accident. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when I was laid up for four months, but, uh, yeah, she's, she didn't want me getting back on a bike, but mentality wise, I will tell you that I had to for myself to get back up on that iron horse, you know, because either that or I never would again and that how goes hard, for any rider how hard is it at, you know per se if you have an accident to get back on the saddle i'm gonna say i was nervous i was nervous I, but You're after getting dude. back on and riding it, it it's i i actually it opened up my eyes to a lot more shit let's just put it that way you know the things around me and what's going on so <laughs> I think I'm more Slow defensive, and... more defensive when it comes to my riding style now. After the, after my accident, so, slowing down at intersections more and shit like that. Yeah, and then watching the yeah. like, watching the cagers and so forth. Yeah, you, you got it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but How about you? Kind of, she did not want me to get back on a bike, but I had to for myself. Mm. Right. You gotta face your demon. You know you have to face yep. your demon and get if you, you don't. Have to. Yep, you right. have to. Dark so uh, what's your uh, take on this? Uh, my old lady, she gets worried and so she tells me good, but she knows very well that it's not going to stop me. I mean, mm. before before Rumble, I had my accident in two, uh, October of last year, 
I laid my bike down, $13,000 worth of damage and $22,000 in the insurance medical bills and stuff. Tore mm-hmm. up my ankle and stuff, uh, but I got back on my bike soon. It was repaired. It was like by June. I got it all repaired and stuff, and I went back to the same spot where I laid it down and basically said, fuck you, and went right through that damn tunnel and fucking told that old lady ghost in there to say, fuck you, bitch. I'm going to do right. this again. I went through that tunnel three times. You know, uh-huh. and, but yeah, it, she worries. The same thing, me getting in the rig and stuff. She tells me be careful and stuff, but she knows very well. I mean, anyone of us could walk out that door. You know, it could be our last time. It, it anything, it can just sound on twos, you know. Exactly. What did you learn from that, though, Bedlam and uh, Dark Soul, about the wreck afterwards? <clears throat> Dark, I'll let you go first, man. Kind of gave me a little wake up call. You're not invincible, you know, no matter how mm-hmm. good you are. Yeah. You know, I mean, my instance was uh, a horseshoe curve uh, here. The tunnel is uh, had a uh, water running across it. And lo and behold, where that water is, is there's algae and oil and stuff there. And all I did is uh, I maybe was doing 10 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour. And I got that big 117. All I did is kick it into second gear. Let out the clutch and it just slipped out from underneath me and broke free. And I couldn't recover. You know, I, I tried to recover and it just got out from underneath me. You know? Right. And, but like I say, you, any any wreck you talk to, there's some of them. They they say that's it. I'm done. I'm not getting back on it. But I was determined. It's not going to stop me. You know, I wrecked my three wheeler. I wrecked my go kart. I mean, I've, I've I've done some stupid stuff. I mean. My my freaking BMX bike back in the day and everything, fucking jumping ten foot ramps and stuff and going flying and stuff and freaking get tossed over the top of the handlebars and just got right back on the bike and do it again. Yep. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. Bedlam. What did you learn? I learned that I'm not going back to Harley Davidson for a third bike. <laughs> Well, hold on, uh, hold on a second, guys. We got a special guest coming in. Uh oh. Oh, Shaggy! Hey! What up, Shaggy? What's up, Shaggy? Uh, you know, call me old. Me <laughs> new truck player. Uh, got no style. Uh, look here, hey, man, man, I got respect for you, brother. You're on the Missouri side. I got to. <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple of you over there in commie land, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, and just so you know, I've only been pulled over uh, uh, twice in, in my 45 years of life. Once I was profiled, and the other time, you know, I, I hit an ambulance and didn't realize I hit the ambulance. Apparently, it took like 12 cops to get my truck stopped because I was an eight, 18 uh, drove, drove an 18 wheeler at the time, and man, that was uh, <laughs> that was nerve wracking. <laughs> well, Shaggy, you can relate then to what I'm talking about then. Yep. You know, um, profiling is not a, really a problem in St. Louis. Uh, no. They have hot spots in, in, in uh, Missouri, but uh, for the most part, you know, um, all those crotch rocket idiots, they, they uh, keep the cops pretty busy. So those of us that are in clubs and ride, you know, Harleys and don't do the wheelies and act like jackasses on the road. You know, we can yep. ride 80, 90, 100 mile an hour in a pack, you know, and the cops don't bother us. Yeah, that's well, I think, I've, been, I've been profiled way more times it's before I had my badge on my I think, uh, well, Shaggy, you know, uh, you, since you are from St. Louis, I'm glad you, brought that up. you know about the, the, the hunt, what was it, the uh, What's that? 100 year ride that they have in St. Louis every year or most <laughs> of the time? Where all the bike, all the sports bikes get together. You ever heard of it? Somebody's breaking up. It's either me or you. I said, have you ever heard of the hundred year ride in St. Louis? Breaking up. That ain't us. No, it ain't us. No, that ain't us. It must be that right eight here. track internet. It's got to be. Let me, let me try this again. Hold on. That dial up he messing with over there. Anyway, yeah, he, he, as far as the sports bike scene is concerned in St. Louis, that is that is horrendous here. That's you know why that, Shaggy that gets, a great point huh? that Shaggy makes a great point that all the sport bike riders are keeping the cops. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. They do. 
That's why. That's why I said. That's why I've never been pulled over because they profile and go after them, the sport bikers, more than they do, you know, Harley, you know, people that ride cruisers and so forth. All right, uh, Dark Soul. What was you asking me? I uh, said, so, uh, you know how it is. I'm, I'm a truck driver too. I mean, been doing tried driving a truck for 27 years, so you, you, you kind of know the experience that we deal with on the road, you know. Sure, absolutely, I do. Um, matter of fact, uh, uh, I, I'm a. <laughs> a big advocate for a lot of the safety stuff that they got coming out. And what's really bad is, is, you know, most guys that are uh, in this lifestyle, you know, we're a firm believer in the uh, aspect of um, uh, only the strongest survive, you know, uh, Darwinism type shit. And uh, it, it, it's comical when we talk about motorcycle safety and we talk about the helmets and we talk about the gear and, and, and that kind of stuff like that, people don't understand that we're talking from what we've seen and experiences, and most of our experiences are really gruesome. Well, true that. Well, true that. Dave. Hey, uh, Shaggy, no, man, we're thinking, about your, we're thinking about getting like, your radars. Yeah. Um, radar. We're thinking about getting you a radar system, man. See if you to figure it out. I don't think he's hearing us, man. Yeah, he can't hear us. Say what now? I'm. We're all thinking about pitching in, getting you a radar system. That new tech. I am not doing a radar system. <laughs> <laughs> There's no fucking way I'm putting a radar on anything on my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when that technology came out and truck drivers were using it. You know, the, the, every time somebody walk in front of that truck, it start dinging off. I could never get you sleep at night. <laughs> That's what I was talking about earlier, Shaggy. Man, the freaking you brakes that car paper? be cutting you off, and freaking uh, the brakes will automatically come on. You know, I think he's having a hard time hearing us. Ah, uh, technical difficulties. That's why you can't give him a radar system, man. He wouldn't know how to work that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's all froze up. <laughs> so what about you now, Hollywood? Are you thinking about getting tunes well, on see, your bike? I'm trying to kick this goddamn. Nah, man. You know what? I I like listening it through my helmet, but you know, with the Dyna and stuff, there's not much you can do with a sound system on it. What about that nah. new horn you put on? Did, how's that turned out? That new horn you put on your bike is it pretty loud, dude? It's like a semi. Which <laughs> horn is that? that the moto horn. Yeah, that moto horn uh, dual. Yeah, yeah. I want to get one of those. <laughs> Now, Shaggy, earlier today, we'll, we'll talk to, about the fun stuff. Partying compared to right. when you first started out compared to now. I don't party, man. I never partied. I sit around a, 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 a table with a bunch of guys, and we talk about Jeebus and the finer things in life, like, you know, religion, politics. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't I can't really speak too much of the partying from back in the day because I was still active duty. So um, anything that I did back then, you know, uh, what yep, is alleged and I would not admit it, even if I even if I wanted to. Oh, you're talking military, man. You better know how to party. <laughs> like that. In the military, we don't party. We take care of this country. We're serious about it. You know, we never drink. We never <laughs> fornicate with loose women. Uh, we are there to do a job. Hey, Shaggy, I'm prior <laughs> Navy as well, and I call bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what part of the Navy you were in. See, I was a, a CB, so, you know, uh, okay. I do okay. know that haze gray and underway, you know, peer queer shit. Oh! <laughs> wow! Ow! I was in the medical field. We're good. Oh, you're, you're a doc. Okay, you're all right with me then. 
There you go. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, walk around with a silver bullet. Everybody continues to move forward, and we don't stop for nothing. There you go. There you go, man. Uh, Danny, man, I know you you had some words for Shaggy, man. Now he's right here for you. <laughs> he already heard it. Hold that, brother. <laughs> he already heard it. He was watching the show. <laughs> yep. He's young, all right. <laughs> don't back down now. <laughs> what would you like me to say? I'll say whatever you want me to. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 and Shaggy, talk about your uh i've been interested in hearing this and stuff uh talk about your old one your uh i think it's what you got a 70s iron head if i'm not mistaken oh i've got a couple iron heads man um love those old motorcycles those uh nice. i think everybody who uh gets in this lifestyle should just start out on an old iron head They'll learn how to work on them. They'll learn how to uh, uh, keep them running. Um, uh, this thing keeps locking up. I wonder if I went in your kitchen where it's uh, closer to the router. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Oh, they won't. Well, I'm not the only one that's falling out on this. So some of these other guys are too. I'll get back. All right. Go ahead, uh, Bedlam. What do you think? You think. Uh... Everybody should own that old. I know I owned an old iron head. I wish I owned an old iron head. I wish I owned a uh, shovel head. <laughs> yeah, better now, yeah. I started out with a shovel head. You better now. Yeah, we hear, we hear you now. Go ahead about your bikes. Well, the old iron head, just like the old shovels, um, if you don't work on them every single day, um, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Uh, you ain't lying. If they're, you know, <laughs> give me a day's uh, If they stop leaking, that just means they need more oil. Yeah. Um, you know, you could get away with using 87 yeah. octane, but uh, you better run 93 or at least 91 uh, because all them old bikes, man. All, there's a reason why they had big throated carburetors is because they all needed gas and they had lots of it to keep them running. Uh, super mm -hmm. B's are great for iron heads. Um, I actually, uh, have a, an old iron head. Uh, I think it's a 57. I think is what year it is. It's uh, first year of the 900. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, actually chopped out and stuff. I'm, I take you guys out in the garage and show you, but I'm not home. Uh, as you can see with the technical difficulties, I'm kind of using my phone here, but uh, um, it had a, a super uh, E on it. And I was amazed that it even ran with that thing because I'd never seen one run on an E before. Yeah, it's um, too much carb for it. The right? great thing about mm -hmm. those old motorcycles. No, uh, it had a, uh, um, God damn it. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here, but um it, it it wasn't those kind of carburetors don't give it enough fuel like the the b the b was set up for dragging you know um oh, okay. just, is one adjustment to it and everything was just fuel 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 um uh -huh. the other thing with the old iron heads is they have points um and they had flyweights and they had springs in the flyweights and uh, back in the day, I would carry a pocket full of springs, a matchbook, and a dime. And yep. um, that's how I got it down the road. Oh, a lot of people I've actually, don't. I've actually heard a couple people uh, say that they ran uh, a Makuni on, a, on an iron head, and it ran pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never seen one, but I've heard it. A Makuni on an iron head? Yeah, I've, I've heard a couple people talk about that. I, I, I haven't seen see one, that. though. Right. Uh, I, I what do you yeah, think? I never about, had an iron head. I had a shovel head. Shaggy, what do you think about the? Uh, because you just brought up some stuff that a lot of the younger guys wouldn't know about points, working on a bike. Why do you think iron heads would be the perfect start for them? Because they're a bitch to kick over if you don't have them tuned properly, which will give you great leg, leg strength or blow your knee out, one of the two. Um, or both. They have a, <laughs> an attention to detail. 
um, that you have to stay on top of. And bikers are lazy now. I mean, maintenance on motorcycles, especially when they come to <laughs> my shop, I see is damn near nil to, to, to none because they're, they're so reliable. Um, bikes don't leak like they used to. So people don't check their oil as often as they used to. Um, uh -huh. People don't don't spend the time that we used to back in the day on our motorcycles because uh, they don't they don't really have to. I mean, they're very reliable. Um, most guys will do an oil change before they go on a trip, and then they'll put all their miles while they're on the trip, and they come back and and they may or may not do an oil change. You know, they may spend the rest of their time riding around town. Uh, back in the day, you know, we we didn't have full synthetics. We used uh, regular oil and. 2,000 to 3,000 miles, you're changing that oil. So you're, a lot of times you're changing that oil while you're out on the road. Yep. Um, I think having an old, an old bike like that, you know, that you got to work on all the time, it just kind of, to, to me, I think it, it kind of makes you a biker. You know what I mean? I mean, you learn about your bike and... You, you build a relationship with your motorcycle in order to be yeah. you know, um, a, a, a clubber, in order to be a, a full-on, I guess, I, instead of a motorcycle enthusiast, a, a full-on titled biker, I guess, is you and your motorcycle got to be one this in the same because motorcycles have their own personality, and every fucking one of them is different, and there's a reason why bikers name their bikes after women because motorcycles are just like fucking women. They're moody. They're, you know, crabby. They're, <laughs> they have their moments. They love you, and they, they'll... they'll bring erotica to you and then they'll snatch it all away and want child support. Yeah. So if yeah. you had to take one of your iron heads, uh, say cross country, what equipment would you, or tools would you take with it? And what would you expect you would have to do on the road? A lot. Um, I've done this. Um, I carry a lot of tools, um, carry, uh, some homemade specialty tools that iron heads are, are known for having. Um, the literally i would used to back in the day i would have more tools in my pouch and extra parts in my pouch than what i would close um <laughs> as a young man i learned to carry socks underwear and you know maybe a shirt um mm -hmm. that's why back in the day everybody had the, the the mentality of oh bikers were dirty bikers it wasn't dirty because we didn't want to carry clothes with us we had more um tools and parts than what we had um, um yeah. uh, room for clothes yep mm -hmm. a pair of pants ain't gonna get your bike fixed <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. what was the that's worst part the um well while well, you're uh, on the road the worst one was when I, I went out to california and i blew the rear head uh on my soft tail um it was one of the easiest fix, though. Was um, that an Evo? No, that was on a twin cam. Okay. On my 07. Uh, mm -hmm. The um, worst on the iron head was uh, actually, we weren't really on the road. We were just tooling around, and uh, I blew some flyweights. And because of the short shot uh, pipes I had on them, a uh, blue flame comes shooting out of the, the pipe, caught my leg on fire. I'm running across the fucking beach. A cop pulls over. He's like, hey, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, my leg's on fire. He goes, there's sand all around you. Well, I was shit house drunk, and I didn't want to get close to the cop. So I said, no, nah, I'm just going to make it to the water. <laughs> <laughs> Shaggy, you're working on a bike now, right? That you said uh, on your previous uh, show, you, you're about to get ready to tear one down and rebuild I it. just... Uh, I just uh, built a, a buddy of mine's uh, twin cam for him. Um, took a, a Screaming Eagle 103 and made it a 106. Um, I got a Club Brothers bike that uh, I'm making. Uh, he sent me all the pieces and parts, and it came in pieces and parts. Uh, shovel head uh, chopper. Um, I've got a 73 iron head that I'm building uh, for a former Club Brother of mine. Um, and my uh, 57, I'm probably going to tear it down because um, the guy who built it did a phenomenal job, but then at the same time, he, uh, I'm pretty sure he was uh, heavily into methamphetamines and about day four, day five being up, um, he 
quit welding uh, nicely. <laughs> so there's a lot of shit I got to fix. Um, I'm always busy into doing something with bikes. I mean, that's just part of our lifestyle, man. I mean, um, people find things and hobbies that make them happy. And one of the things that, that I like doing and, and most people in, in my circle like doing is working on motorcycles and riding them. Would you say that working on a bike is almost as good as the wind therapy itself? Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. A very, very kind of well-known elder in a, in a different uh, 1% club made the comment, and it's an absolute true comment. And the, the comment was, the evolution was the death of brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because everybody used to. I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, everybody used to sit in the garage working on everything, uh, telling all the yeah. uh, the stories and stuff like that. That's that's uh, how Brotherhood got built, man. You'd ride your motorcycle, everybody would break down. And then on Sunday, you'd hang out in, in somebody's garage and you know fix each other's bikes and work on them and do it all over again. Well, now that's with right. the technology of the bikes, it's just crazy, man. It, it's like yeah. they. They built it on purpose where you can't freaking work on them. Right. Actually, the, uh, twin cams, the twin cams are way easier to work on than any of the other bikes. They're easier to iron so? heads. Or easy. Oh, absolutely. Right. Um, less parts. Yeah. Less yeah. Parts. You got a well, good you, point there. Yeah. Yeah. You watch Ken Baxter, you know, he tears down an M8 motor all the way from every nut and bolt. He walks you through it and Ken tells Baxter you about is that amazing. Um, he had not only walks you through the Milwaukee 8, he also walks you through the twin cam. Um, yeah. He explains the purpose of every piece and part that's on there. And dude, dude knows what he's doing. Matter of fact, uh, the engine that's on my bike now that has 102,000 miles on it's coming out this winter. And uh, I'm going to send it to, to Kevin Baxter and have him do his magic trick. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, another thing I think that uh, people forgot was we used to carry the manual for our bike around, man, uh, the repair manual. Nobody does that anymore. Uh, actually, I, I didn't get a repair manual for my 73 until after I had already went through a 73, a 78, and had gotten an 88 and it was the first year, I think, first year for the Evo Sportster, because I was a sports remote back in the day. And um, I learned by hanging out with the old techs. There you go. Hey, guys, I'm going to have to bow out. I got family things I need to take care of here. All right, Dark. Um, have um, a good one, man. See you later, Dark. Later, later Dark Soul. Danny, everyone. Peace out. Later, bro. Peace out. So uh, back in the day, uh, all the old guys you, you hung out with them. You need a book. Everybody um, was the book. Right. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that's something everybody needs to get back to, man? Just sitting there partying in the garage and having a good old time, lying about who they screwed, and you know, I think a lot of people would. Love Should I still I think, do it? I I think it's not so much as to getting back to it. It's uh, just doing it. Um, uh, I, I, brotherhood is more than just patches. I mean, I mean, look at the the motorcycle enthusiast side and, and the uh, independent side. I mean, there's guys, man, that, that roll deep. You know, that are just buddies and just hang out and you know yep. do their thing, man. And and they do it in their garages and they they do it, you know, without having a patch on. So I mean, okay, uh, I mean, I understand that aspect of getting back together and hanging in the garage. But I, I'd rather not only do that, but like my grandkids and so forth. I like bringing them, showing them, mm -hmm. and teaching them about the bikes. Oh, absolutely. You know, getting the youngsters in and showing them. If if it's it's more the younger generation that needs to know than the current. You know, and just I hanging do. out. Well, so, I absolutely agree. It starts at home. It starts with you yeah. know being a parent and a grandparent and and. Uh, Passing, pa passing that passion for th this lifestyle and, and the love of motorcycling on to the, the, the youth. Um, they, they are the future of this, man. I, I tell guys all the time, wouldn't it be something to be badass if we're all reincarnated and, you know, 50, 60, 100 years from now and, and you know, 
these kids are rolling around on, you know, flying what looks like motorcycles, but they ain't got wheels. They fly now, you know. I mean, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Right. Well, to your point, Bedlam, as a father and grandfather, does it make you nervous to get them riding now? No, this- no. Well, as long as they, I'll change that. I'll change I that real quick. You. Because you know, as long as they got their heads on straight and they and they know what uh, what they're capable of doing, you know, and I'm not pushing them, you know, to do it. I'd rather them being able to to get on their bike, you know, on the bikes on their own. Them to want know? to do it rather than and that, yeah, and they have to want to do it, you know. Uh, I got a granddaughter. She loves getting on the back of the bike, man. She's only nine, and she'll get on the back of the bike and ride, you know, with her dad, with me, so forth. Uh, I got a son who's, who loves to get on a, you know, would love to own his own bike, but he hasn't gotten one yet. Uh, it's yeah, I, I I think they'd have to want it to do it, you know. But you know, every time every time my bike's outside or the other thing, you know, like even in the garage, my my grandkids will run out there and sit on it. So. That's just, just, just the way they are. Go ahead, Jack. Still, still every spring, me and well, my brother... And also, uh, we can't... We... Go ahead, Jack. I was going to say, we, we can't live our lives worrying other than our typical parent, parent worry about what these youngsters are doing. All we can do is give them the uh, correct guidance guidance Yep. And then let them do it because nobody, nobody tried to tell. We wouldn't listen to nobody. We gotta understand the kids yep. ain't either. Uh, we can't let the today's day and age of how traffic and and drivers are. Uh, we can only teach them how to be safe. You know, first thing is is teaching them in the garage as a young age, and then send them to a, you know, make them take a, a rider safety course, and and then let them go from there. I mean, we got our experience from pounding the pavement, and they're not going <laughs> to get that experience unless they're pounding the pavement. Yeah, right. I Danny, you saying something? I was just starting to say that I still do uh, like every spring. Me and some of my bros, we do like a like almost our own update. You know, our update. You know, we uh, we sit around in the garage. We're changing our oils. We're you know waxing our bikes, getting them ready for the summer. You know, me and my brother Red, which Hollywood knows. Um, many, many times we, we just sit in the garage all day, Sunday, he's working on his bike and we're all just hanging out watching, you know, or I'm working on mine and we're all hanging out watching whatever. So, I mean, I still do that. You know, I don't know about that's the whole getting he, back that, to it. That's cause he has to man with that sportster. He's breaking it down every couple months. Well, he's got, <laughs> yeah, he's got the iron head, but now he's got that brand new road glide too. So right. but there ain't nothing to do on that, but change the oil and go, you know? Well, what's funny what Shaggy was saying about just letting them loose and stuff, I think that's a hard thing for me because I don't know if it's what I've seen or people getting killed on them. It just makes me nervous, but he's right. They got to go out there, get the safety courses because they're going to do it without you any damn way. They're going to tell you, go screw yourself. Hollywood, right. it's when it's your time, it's, it's your, your time. time. Nobody, nothing is, you, you can't get away from it man so you might as well have fun while we're here yeah, well i'm not it's, talking it's, about us i'm talking about the kids or grandkids the same thing goes for them yeah you know? well, actually, 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 you we want it. better for the kids you know we don't yeah. want them to experience what we experienced but then again, we at the same time you know yeah yeah there, but there it's like a, i always tell it's like i always say that you know once you step out that door you don't know what could happen exactly you know? yes sir so one of my former club brothers uh, at the property he owned down in Southern Mississippi, about two properties down was uh, a guy and his kids were all in a motocross. He had a whole motocross field in the back, jumps the whole nine yards. And, and our club brother's kid was, was into all that shit. So we went down there one day and man, I'm going to tell you what, when it comes to kids, you know, I, I, my heart always melts. They okay, kid can get me to do anything pretty much he wants me to do. Right. But, I'm watching these kids do these jumps and I'm cringing and I'm like, what the fuck, man? I, I, no way I mean, these kids are no holds barred either. I mean, they're right. way up in the air. They don't give a shit. 
You're running and, out there uh, trying to save them and shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and what was I've the been sad there. part is, you know, six or eight months later, the the, the guy that owned that property, his son, uh, his middle kid, I think, or his, old, his middle kid or his oldest kid, but did a jump and and came down wrong and broke his neck and died. And oh, uh, wow. he had like, two or three other kids still, but I mean, you just never know. But that kid, man, he uh-huh. was good. I mean, uh, it's just the way. Like I said, you never know when you walk out that door. I mean, that's why they call today the, the present, and, and and you know we don't we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Well, one last subject before we get off here, and it's something Shaggy just brought up, is the trail system. What can we do to actually get a better trail system, especially here in Illinois? We don't have it for the off road. Uh, because the popular bike now is the Pan America. A lot of people want to get into the off-road type of stuff, and that's been hard as hell around uh, Illinois and other states to get a place to ride. You're up, Shag. Well, I mean, if you're into that thing, then you you just like with anything. Um, I could I can run into a clubber anywhere, knowing he's a clubber by just how he walks, talks, carries himself the whole nine yards, and, and that's my circle. Um, it's weird how that happens, eh? Pan American, isn't it? The guys that are in the Pan Americans and into the the dirt bike scene and the, and the off road scene, man, they know where to go. Um, uh, there's trails in, in Alaska. There's there's trails up in the, the northern part of the United States. Hell, there's trails that we don't even know about, but them cats will know about. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You just got to know your circle. You got to know your uh, your your. Again, Hollywood, it's not this, what you know, but who do and, you know? And the people you hang around with, I mean, everybody talks. Well, do you think right. uh, off-road right. and dirt, bi- right. dirt bikes is also, is the springboard so, to get these kids involved with motorcycling? <laughs> Hello? Um, I don't know. I'm not big into off-road. Uh, I, I don't care too much for it. Matter of fact, it pisses me off when I got to ride on, you know, gravel roads because I can't ride at the speed I want to ride without putting it in a ditch. <laughs> what See, about I, you? I did, I did the dirt bike thing mm-hmm. for a while, and I know that I can go down to Southern Missouri. There's areas down there where I can ride dirt bikes. There's, there's hardly any, there's, it's like it's like you said. There's no pretty much no area in Illinois unless you want to. If you hit the levees. You know, but you're going to get busted by the cops you know, unless you outrun them real quick. But uh, as far as, as, yeah, the dirt bike scene is totally different. And it's it, it's like Shaggy said, it is its own circle, you know, mm-hmm. compared to uh, street bikes, regardless. So right. unless, it's like who you, it's, and it's like Graystar said, it's who you know. Yeah. So. Exactly. Well, guys, uh, it was an awesome show today. Tomorrow on the Neutral Zone. We got Black Dragon coming on, and we're going to talk about some fun stuff like uh, the old uh, biker magazines and, you know, a lot of fun stuff with that. And then, of course, there's the roundtable after that. I don't know uh, what he has planned. But like I told everybody, because people have been asking me, I kind of jump off quick on the roundtable. I'm more uh, interested in the independent stuff, uh, the clubbers talk uh, with the club stuff. But uh, it was an awesome show, Uh, good tech advice from Shaggy, good uh, conversation with Danny, Bedlam, Graystar, Dark Soul. I really enjoyed the different segments. Uh, Do you mind if I have one last comment? Go ahead. I want to say Merry Christmas to y'all. Oh, yeah. Merry Merry Christmas, man. It's been a hard year. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Being around y'all has helped, man. So, hopefully we can get Shaggy to come on more and talk tech with us, man, because I really like the tech shit. Uh, you know, it gets it really gets me uh, deep. I love the especially talking about the old iron heads, shovel heads, uh, pan heads. It, it, I always thought if Harley, you know, and I know SNS does it, but I thought if Harley Davidson came back with a limited uh, production uh, pan head, they sell out quicker than hell, man. Oh, sh- I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. <laughs> well, I had intended on being on here, but you guys take care of yourself and have a Merry Christmas. 
Peace. You too, Jay. Have a good one. Thanks for coming on, man. And awesome man, you know, stuff, so. man. Rock and roll, man. Uh, don't forget to visit Shaggy's channel. We also got Danny D'Lo, who just hit a thousand. Man, I can't believe a thousand people want to hear his ugly ass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come over, listen to some so much, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bedlam, uh, you know, you have to get we got to get him to a hundred subscribers that way he to do some helicopters for our uh Canadian up there. Uh, I bet all the Vipers will love that shit. And then, of course, uh, Graystar. But guys, come on, uh, go over to their channels, give them some love. I know they got TikToks. I haven't figured out how to do it, so I'm just leaving that alone. But you got uh, enough shit going on. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Danny will be on. China, uh, China Doll's got fucking TikTok pretty covered. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Danny will be on uh, the round table. Uh, check him out over there. That's a real good show. Uh, yeah, we'll so be there tomorrow, what, at 7 p.m. Central Time? 7 Central, unless you're Black Dragon's time, you know, it'll probably be a little late. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate having you guys on. It was a badass show. Really loved it. You can see the replays on YouTube and Roku. We got Roku TV. I got to get some Danny shit up there. You need to learn um, how to say that word. <laughs> we from Chicago. Hey, hey Hollywood, if you go on our um, on our roundtable chat, I got my commercial up there if you wanted to grab that. All right, cool. I'll get that. Uh, so with cool. that, guys, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good Merry one. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. Much love. Go, 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 go. Go get you a blowing goes, guys. Talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs>